Good morning, folks. Welcome to Paul John's Homestead Channel. Well, today, I'm going to be putting up some chicken. Uh, we're going to pressure can it. Went out the other day. Well, it's been several weeks ago. I bought this uh, bought this canner. The reason I bought it was someone had given me 25 pounds of beets, so I can't eat 25 pounds of beets at one time. So, due to the low acidity, uh, I couldn't just use a hot water bath on these. These are the canned beets. Nice color to them. They taste really good. I also had 15 pounds of sweet potatoes. Did the same thing. Couldn't eat all this at one time. And then, last night, while I was cutting chicken up for today, I had some potatoes, just regular old white and yellow potatoes, that were uh, almost bad. So I took and canned those. Those will last a lot longer on the shelf than they will sitting out. Anyway, Safety, always use the food safety guidelines. Um, use your directions, your recipes. Follow those closely. It's putting food up, there's a chance that your food could go bad, you could have some spoilers, and it could cause a lot of, a lot of problems. Um, anyway, always follow your guidelines. So I'm gonna walk you through today. One reason I'm doing this chicken is because I caught it on sale. And that's one of the advantages of, uh, of canning this. You can use this pressure canner and you can can meat. You can chicken, fish, poultry, you know, any type of poultry, uh, beef, uh, wild game. You can can it in jars, put it on the shelf, and you don't need a freezer. You don't have to depend on an electric company. You don't have to worry about your appliance going out. And as uh, long as it's in a cool place, cool, dry place, it'll keep. Always follow your, your food safety guidelines on, uh, on the amount of time. Make sure you mark your jars. I still need to mark these, but mark the year on it. Anyway, today, the cold packing this chicken, basically what I'm going to do, process all the chicken and I'm going to show you a way to process these leg quarters to uh, to get what you need to go in these your jars. It's really straightforward. It's nothing, not a whole lot to it. Follow, like I said, follow your guidelines. <clears throat> I'm going to raw pack these ch this chicken in jars, seal them, and put them into this cold, regular tap water. Put it in this cooker without heating it up. So first thing I'm gonna do, is gonna get chicken ready. All right, so on your chicken, these are leg quarters. It's really easy to process. There's not a whole lot to it. You can take this chicken quarter. Now I've already rinsed these off. Normally, I'll trim some of this off, but let's see. We're gonna start right here. See this line here? If you put your finger there, you press down and you move this joint, you can feel where that joint is. Basically right there where that fat line is, back this way toward the end here, just a little bit. And you can cut that whole leg off just like that. Not a whole lot to it, it's pretty quick. Trim off this excess fat. You don't want a whole lot of extra skin, loose skin and fat in your, in your jars. It won't hurt it, but don't throw any of this away. All this here can go into a stock pot. You can cook this down and make a chicken broth and uh, actually can that chicken broth for soups, which that's what I'm gonna be doing with this. I have a gallon bag that's nearly full. So that chicken legs dressed up, it's always clean, it's ready for the jar. Now, because this is a leg quarter, your thigh still has the backbone on a lot of the pieces. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim up a little bit of this fat. Now, turn it over. You see this, there's a bone here. You run your thumb down here, you'll feel 
There's a set of ribs there. There's a little, little bone here. Take your knife, put it behind those bones. Run it down just a little bit. You can take this and actually take this bone and turn it up like that. You can see that knuckle right there. So on this, you got this standing up now. Just take your knife, run this down just like so. And there's your backbone. I didn't worry about getting all the meat off because I'm gonna use this for broth. But now we can finish trimming this up. If you want to debone this, just lay it over. You can feel the bone here. Take your knife. Run up under that bone. You see it turns out. Go along this side of your bone. And there's the bone. Now you have a boneless thigh. That quick. This here is my bag for my stock. This is all the fat, back bones, any bones, any trimmings, all this will go into the pot for stock. A lot of times you'll have extra flaps here on your chicken. <laughs> all that fat needs to go. So, same thing. See this leg here? See that fat? If you put your finger there and run it down, you can feel just back this way just a little bit is where the knuckle is. Get it laid down, see where the knife is now? There's the fat line, there's the knife. Just that quick. This here, nothing to it. Here's your bone. All right, so this is your fat bone. Turn it up where you can get behind it. All right, see there's the knuckle. I went down to the angle, left a little bit on the bone, and now we can trim the rest of what we don't want here. You don't want a whole lot of extra fat inside your jars. Same thing, there's the bone. Go down. Go on this side, you can take it, turn it this way. There's the bone. Now you have a boneless thigh. Just that quick. There's another one. There's your fat line on the leg side right here. Take that knife and run it down. Make sure that. All right, you don't want that. I don't want that in there. So what I'm gonna do is cut this tailbone off. Go, go right behind that, those bones. If you're not sure where that bone's at, you can take and actually break it over and you see that knuckle right there. Go back behind that knuckle. Straight down alongside the backbone and that gets most all your meat. Be careful, watch your fingers. All right, there's your bone style. See your fat line back on the leg side just a little bit. Run that knife straight down in there, cut it off every time. Folks, uh, 
if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you would go ahead and subscribe if you like to see more videos here on the homestead be glad to hear from you if you want to leave a comment in the comment section This candy session is a precursor to it's actually a warm up to uh, my meat chickens this year. I plan on raising some meat chickens here on the homestead for my consumption so that I know what's in the meat. And that's another advantage of, uh, of canning, canning your own meat and own vegetables. You know exactly what goes in that can. You don't have to worry about any anything leaching out of your jar. You don't have to worry about uh, having something that's over seasoned. Those of you with high blood pressure, you can leave sodium out. Okay, let's first go around. I'm gonna do uh, pint jars, uh, mainly because it's just me. Um, this will make one to two meals. There's no need for me to be eating out of quart jars for three or four days. So basically, on the raw pack, it's just that. Take your jar, take your chicken, put it down inside the jar. And you see that leg there? I'm gonna put two or three in there facing down. I'm gonna put some in there facing up. Now, on this chicken, you don't want to, you want to leave your head space at the top. Let me double check. So I'm going strictly by the book here. I'll leave an inch and a quarter head space here, which that is just about an inch and a quarter there. That's below the, below the rim. <clears throat> these have bones in them, and when I process these, but we'll process these because your pints for uh, 65 minutes. Just leave an inch and a quarter head space with your chicken. Can't be any easier than that. Put those in there. Now, I'm not going to overpack this. I'm not going to stuff it in here. Three will be plenty. That's one meal for me. I'm going to use all my small pieces for the pints. And then I'm going to use uh, the larger pieces for my quart jars. The little bit that you get on the jar, don't worry about it. Because we're going to clean these rims off when we get done packing them. Now my cooker will do, I think, 10 pints. So that's what we're going we're gonna to put together, 10 pints. Perfect four just enough for two meals now you do want to go ahead and wash and sterilize your jars these have been washed and sterilized so quarts and pints process at different times refer back to you to your instruction manual or to your food safety uh, standards these are all bone ends. I'll process my pints first, then I'll go back and I'll do my quarts. I'm not trying to overfill these jars, especially with the amount of chicken that's in them. So remember, it's in a quarter head space. matter what kind you want to use some distilled vinegar to clean the uh, rims off for your jars before you uh, put the lids on and what this does is it cleans off anything that's on that surface there 
and will allow it to give a allow it to have a uh, good seal. Just use some clean napkins here. You use a rag. <clears throat> Go ahead and get your get your bandages out ready. Inspect the tops. Make sure you don't have any nicks. Anything that's broke. Really simple. Put your band on. It'll tell you only, only do your bands finger tight. Use the tips of your fingers, take it and turn it. That's as tight as it needs to be. Okay, we're gonna set these over in some cold water and we'll bring it up to the, uh, we'll bring the heat up and everything will heat together so that these jars won't bust. You take these and put them in hot water, you're gonna have problems. When you're handling these lids, do not touch this rubber part here. You don't want to get anything on that side of your uh, your lids because it could possibly cause it to fail. So, all right, so just remember, finger tight. And when you're canning, it doesn't matter about these bands. They, they can look ugly. There's nothing wrong with them. They, they serve their function, they hold the lids on. Show you another little trick here too. When you buy these jars and they come in a, a whole case, they'll have the, the lids and the rims on them. You take a piece of string, just a bunch of twine, take one, tie it on the bottom. You can slip all your rings on here and then hold them together. You can hang these up in your cellar closet or put them in a box. We got 10 pints and we got four quarts. The cost on that was roughly $10. Well, it was supposed to be $10. I paid a little bit more, but the sale was $5 for 10 pounds. So it'll make a lot of meals. <laughs> these be for larger dishes. And on top of, on top of the fact that the quantity of meals that you can get out of these. I also still have the trimmings and the, the backbones and all the parts that, that I cut off of here. All of that's gonna be turned into a broth and I'll have fresh broth to use to uh, make uh, make soups and, and go into different dishes. Those are all ready to go. I'm gonna take my can. This to get this is five pounds. That's a five pound weight. That makes ten pounds, and it it actually goes all the way up to fifteen. I want ten to process this chicken. That's what I'm going to use. But we're not going to put that on there yet. If you read your book, what we're going to do is we're going to take this. You're going to make sure you're going to make sure that this is in your pot. Do not put your jars directly on this metal in the bottom of the pot. They will bust. In this pot, it actually calls for at least one gallon of water in here. Well, you can see the mark in here, and that's another thing I'm fixing to show you. You see this stain that's in the bottom. First time I used it, <laughs> I forgot to put the vinegar in. But you can take a couple of tablespoons, a couple of tablespoons of uh, vinegar. I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna pour it in. That's two. Put your water in, and that will keep mineral deposits off your jars, and it'll also keep from staining your pot. This chicken will make all the liquid that it's gonna need. It doesn't have to be covered when it's processed to be preserved. It will make its own make its own juices and you can save that and use that for stock you can freeze it and use it for stock 
So I know I got at least a gallon of water in here. Now I can load my jars. Ideally, you don't want these touching, but when you put tin in here, it's very, very close. Get them in there like you need, spread them out. This will hold 10 jars. All right then. So I believe they told me a story. Four, six, eight, nine. So I'm gonna only get nine in this pot. I suppose it's because the jar, the size of the jars, the way they're made. <clears throat> but it's no problem. I'll process nine. I'll come back and I'll do these and uh, we'll do something else with that other small jar. You do not want that water in the pot to be above your jars. You will have all sorts of problems. It's loaded. It's ready to go. I've turned the heat up to high. I'm going to watch it. When steam starts coming out of the, the, not the top, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and I'm gonna add the weight. And once that weight starts jiggling, I'll start my time. And from that, according to the book, because I'm gonna go by the book. According to the book, those are pint jars and it's with the bone. They had the bone in them. So I'm gonna have to process those, cook them at 10 pounds of pressure for 65 minutes. Now, that's because of my altitude. You need to look at your chart inside your book. Just read it, get to know your canner, and, and uh, you'll do good. That's a lot of chicken, that's a lot of meals, and for $10, <laughs> that's a lot of eating. So I'll be back when it's ready. Okay, so. Cook time's up. Something to know about your canner. You need to wait until the safety lock drops. When it drops, then you're gonna remove the weight. Let this finish off. Then you can take the lid off. Once you remove the lid, let it sit for 10 minutes. These pint jars are done. So I'm gonna remove these. And what I did while I was waiting for these to cool down, I put another pot up here, put my four jars in there that I'm going to uh, can, you know, cook next. The next batch I have put in a, uh, put in some water, set it on the stove, brought the temperature up and heated the jars. So now I can put them in my canner. We can go ahead and can this. These are my quart jars. Cook time on those is gonna be a little bit more. Sit the pot up here. I'm gonna turn this back on, I'll wait for it to start venting again. I'll wait 10 minutes. Once 10 minutes is up, I set the weight on it. And once it starts jiggling, I will start the time. So the time on my quart jars will be 75 minutes, according to the book. And that's it. As you can see, this chicken here creates its own juice as it cooks, I don't have to add any water to it. Pretty straightforward, put it in jars and can it. All right, so that's it. All the chicken's done. Uh, just got the uh, corks done. I'm about to pull those out of the jar. I appreciate you watching, folks. Uh, hope you found this video helpful. Good luck if you're canning. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.